Hello, everybody. I just wanted to answer a question that was sent to me on Facebook. This question is, how are there miracles from God, basically blessing certain people, a.k.a. situations where people should have died, when he doesn't help those who are starving? So, really, to answer this question, we've got to lay some groundwork. Why are people starving? Why are there children and people starving in the world, thousands dying every day from starvation, when there's plenty of provisions, there's plenty of food to feed every mouth in the world. But there are some who are hoarding food, there are some who are eating too much, and because of that, those who really need it aren't getting it. And we know that the world is run by men with power. There are, most of the world leaders in the world, they are very, um, they're at the root of this problem. So let's look at what the Bible has to say about this. In Romans 8, 7, it says, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So the carnal mind is enmity against God. What is the carnal mind? What is the Bible speaking of here? The carnal mind is the natural mind, the mind that is still being governed by the principles of sin. This type of mind is enmity against God. It's at war with God. The word enmity actually means to be at war with or to be in rebellion against. So the sinful mind, this natural mind, the sinful mind is at war or in rebellion against God and his plan. For this sinful type of mind is not subject to the law of God. And this verse says, neither can it be. And so Let's look at something Jesus says in the book of Matthew. Matthew 22, verses 37 through 40. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So, here we're told that all of God's law hangs upon the principles of love for God, and love for man, for our fellow neighbors, for our fellow men. He wants us to be able to coexist in an environment where love is perpetuated constantly. But a mind, as we just read, a mind that is against God's law, will also not care about the rights or feelings of their fellow men, of fellow individuals. And so their lives, really, the problem here is that their lives are governed by selfishness. And selfishness is the opposite. It's the enemy of love. And so as long as men allow themselves to be run by selfishness, these problems, this problem of starvation, it will continue. Because selfishness is something that's never satisfied. Ecclesiastes 6 verse 7, it says, All the labor of man is for his mouth, and yet the appetite is not filled. So... It's like you keep you keep feeding and feeding and feeding, but it's it's like an empty hole. That's what selfishness is. It's like a bottomless pit that can never be satisfied. You a selfish person keeps wanting more, wants everything, and it's never satisfied. You know, you think about some people, they've got the money, they've got so much money, but they constantly want more. And they see this car and they want to get it. They see this woman, they want to get her. And they're never satisfied. They always want more, 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 more. In Proverbs 27, verse 20, it says that hell and destruction are never full. So the eyes of men are never satisfied. So this problem of selfishness, it a selfish person can't be satisfied, no matter what. And we see that in the world today. We see this, you know, this idea that's being perpetuated of the 1% versus the 99%. And this 1% has the majority of the money in the world. And the 99% are left to work even harder and to scrounge for money and to pay bills and whatnot. And then, you know, that's, that's in, in first world countries. In third world countries, these people don't have the opportunities like we do, and they're starving and they're dying because of it. So as long as men are at enmity against God, as long as they are continue to give into the carnal mind and live in sin and reject God's law, these problems are going to continue, and it's just going to get worse. But, you know, what, what sense does this make? Why is God working in some people's lives 
working miracles. But then in, in a lot of these lives, we don't see the miracles. Well, first off, we need to follow a biblical principle. Proverbs 3, verse 5. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. So, there are things that God does that we can't understand. And we've just got to trust that he knows what's best. But this idea that, oh, God is working miracles in Americans' lives, but he's letting the children starve in Africa, that's not the case. There are miracles happening over there. I have heard many of these stories. My wife just recently got back from a three-week mission trip in Africa, and she saw miracles happening. And there are people who are helping that they are giving them food, they are giving them clothing, they are helping them. And it's because of that, because of loving people and because of Christians in the world who are willing to do what Christ did and to help others and to put others first, these, these deaths that are happening every day, the number could be much, much higher. And so really, a lot of the fault is on our shoulders as well, because we do have so much. And so we should be using some of our funds to help these people who are in need. And there are different ways that you can do it. You can send money, you can send food, you can even, you know, adopt children. And, you know, not adopt them while they're living over there. You can pay for schooling, you can make sure that they have clothing and food and whatnot. And it's, it's such a small price. It's such a small price compared to what we have to go through. But when you think about, you know, why, why do good things happen, or why do bad things happen to good people? You know, these, these things are constantly happening. You see sometimes these rich people and these, these evil people and all they want is more, more, more and they think about me, 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 but they just keep getting more and it seems like they are constantly being blessed. Everything they touch turns to gold. Yet other people, you know, you, you think of Christians, you think of, you know, early Christians, you think of Paul and the disciples. They were good people and they, they lived the life that God wanted them to live, yet they suffered and were beaten and were burned and were killed and crucified. But 2 Timothy 3.12, it says, Yea, and all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So a lot of these bad things that are happening to Christians, a lot of bad things that are happening to people in the world, it's because Satan is attacking them. And Satan's followers are attacking them because they are living up to God's standards. And we've got to keep that in mind. So... I hope this has kind of answered this question a little bit. You know, it's one of those questions that it, we won't really understand in this world. You know, bad things are happening all the time, and sometimes we can't understand it. But we've just got to, you know, kind of accept things as they are because the world is sinful. There is a sin problem in this world, and I've answered this in the previous video and I will, I will attach it as a response to, to this video. You know, why is there suffering in the world? Why does God allow suffering? And because of this sinful world, we can expect sinful things. We can expect, you know, expect bad things to happen. But even though there's a sin problem in the world, we can still be happy. We still have promises in the Bible that we can stand firm on. John 5, 28 and 29, it says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So these people who are doing these evil things, they will have their reward. And just like these righteous people, these good people who are dying, these innocent children that are dying, they will get their reward as well. And the reward isn't some earthly reward that fades away. John 14, 1 through 3, and this is Jesus speaking. Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Jesus is promising that right now he is in heaven, and mansions are being built, houses are being built for his children, and he will come back for us. He's not going to leave us to perpetually live in this sinful world. He will put an end to the sin problem, and he has a place for us, a place of happiness where there are no tears and there is no crying in death. There is no starvation. There is no suffering. 
just eternal happiness, eternity with our Lord and Savior. So let's hold to these promises. And these things that are happening in this world, this, this bad stuff that we don't understand, we will understand one day. We will see where God was working and working miracles in places where we think we're not seeing miracles. So really, it's a faith thing. And some people aren't going to be able to accept that. A carnal mind that is in, at enmity with God, they're not going to be able to accept this. But we as Christians, hopefully we can accept that God knows best. And he is not causing all these children to starve. And it's not like he's just letting it happen. But sin is running its course. And people are choosing to be at enmity with God. And because of this, other people suffer. And it's not necessarily fair. But God, in the end, justice will be served. The fairness will be given. And so I hope this has helped to answer this question. If you have more questions, if you have comments, send them to me. And I look forward to making a new video and hearing from you guys soon. Thanks for watching.